As demolition day draws closer for the shuttered Allentown State Hospital, we're taking a look back at its long history. WFNC's Bill Colt now spoke to two former employees about what it was like to work there. Here's part one of his special series. More than a century after opening, and a decade after it last housed patients, Hollywood recently gave the Allentown State Hospital a final curtain call. Its 200 acres was the setting for M. Night Shyamalan's blockbuster Glass. I specialize in those individuals who believe they are superheroes. And leftover upgrades remain. But away from the movie's spotlight, time has proven to be the building's antagonist. John McDivitt worked at the hospital for 35 years. In this main building had beautiful marble floors, marble walls. Uh, marble columns, things that you couldn't afford to build a building today. And from that marble-covered entryway to now its crumbling kitchen and dining hall. In January, our cameras captured perhaps the last images inside, which included these underground tunnels. In any given weather, you can go anywhere and not even be outside. And that's how different things from the storeroom that would get delivered, different food trucks would come that way. However, longtime employee Bill Hirschman's favorite memories happened above the ground in the auditorium, where stage and vaudeville shows were put on by staff for patients. I would do more of the grunt work in the background to help them because I, I can't sing. <laughs> Uh, some of the docs thought that they're all Frank Sinatra and Elvis Presley. They would do a great job with the karaoke. Mm -hmm. And everybody just had fun. McDivitt found his fun not on stage, but on the farm. The largest component of that would have been the dairy herd. Uh, we had a large milking herd of registered Holstein cattle. The hospital had its own 850-acre farm in Weaversville. McDivitt was the assistant manager at the farm from 1967 until it closed in 1981. And it provided not only milk and food for several state hospitals, but also a form of therapy for patients. The farm was kind of designed with that in mind, that we would provide a, an environment where patients could find some, something useful to do. They, many of them enjoyed it. At its peak in the 1950s, the hospital housed more than 2,100 patients. And McDivitt, who became the chief of safety and security, says that claustrophobic atmosphere continued well into the late 1960s. They even had patients living in some of the interconnecting corridors between the buildings. They'd have a bed, a nightstand, a chair, but that's where they slept. But by 2009, the patient number had dwindled to less than 200. And in 2010, the state closed the hospital and plans to tear down all of its nearly 30 buildings this spring. A movie script ending to save it isn't likely, but for McDivitt and Hirschman, the hospital played an unforgettable starring role in their life's work. It was a job, but I think I got lucky in life because I didn't feel like I was going to work. Bo Colt now, 69 News. Allentown State Hospital is set to be torn down this spring, but its legacy extends far beyond its walls. WFMZ's Bo Colt now looks into how the hospital became a national leader in the treatment of patients. The one patient, I mean, he just knew how to headbutt, and I ended up getting a concussion. Um, that kind of sets you aside because you're not expecting that as a, a younger person. For over 30 years, Bill Hirschman was on the clinical team at the Allentown State Hospital. Working with and restraining hyperactive patients was part of his daily routine, which included something dubbed wet sheet bed pack. It's where you get a series of warm bed sheets and almost mummify a patient. And they'd have to be in there and it would calm them down. Some of the patients hated it. Actually, some of the old time patients liked it. But in 1992, those old school methods of restraint at the hospital changed to what would become PERT the psychiatric emergency response team process. Instead of using the biggest and strongest to hold on a patient, employees talked to them instead, and Hirschman was the captain for the first PERT team. We empowered the patients to make their own decisions. And that was something you never heard of inside of a state hospital. In my opinion, PERT more than anything else 
um, contributed to Pennsylvania's efforts to diminish, decrease its use of containment procedures. Dr. Gregory Smith was the head of the Allentown State Hospital when it closed and served as the head of nearly a half a dozen others. He says Allentown was the leader in this type of treatment. And the difference at Allentown as ours was talking the person down as opposed to having to touch them at all. And that was new. Smith, who is now a psychiatric and behavioral health care services consultant, also says the hospital banned the method of seclusion, one of the first in the nation to do so, and unscheduled medications, another progressive step in the treatment of behavioral health. Very few hospitals were able to do what Allentown did, and we got significant pushback from our own hospitals in, in Pennsylvania. And Smith published the results of Allentown's methods in a variety of medical journals, and it's been adopted by many law enforcement agencies. PERT became so successful and widespread that in 2016, the World Health Organization adopted its strategies. What happened at Allentown was largely through the efforts of a, a really amazing group of employees who bought into it early on. And it was their value system, their respect, their compassion for people who were in crisis that turned it around. Allentown State Hospital is set to be torn down this spring. And while its physical imprint may be gone, its legacy is firmly set. Bo Colt now, 69 News.